We got it to work in the loop. So now, let's make independent functions for each of those three tasks, and then make them each a little more general than they were, so that we can use them in other code. Our getFloatArray function can be declared as void because it doesn't need to return anything. All of the values are going to come back in the array A that's passed to it by the calling code. It needs to know both where that array is and how many values to put into that array. So that's the value n that's put there as an integer. We can copy the same loop code from up above. All we need to do is change it so that we're going up to n instead of up to explicitly 256. And we need to make sure that the array that we're putting the data into is the one that was passed to the function. Now we can call the function from our loop, and we should get exactly the same behavior. Putting the call after the original code means that the uh, values in the array should be replaced by whatever the function that we call puts into them. It's reassuring to see it work as expected. Now let's comment out the original code just to make sure that it's the function that's doing all the work for us. First thing to do to cure an upload error is try double clicking the reset button so that the big LED turns green and the uh, machine goes back into a receptive state. Works this time. And the function is working as we expected, so that's good. Reassuring. Let's repeat that process to create a function called show float array that uh, has, takes the same arguments and will show us the output values on the serial monitor. It works like a charm and now we can just change an argument to change the number of values that are printed out. It works just fine if we give it sensible arguments, but what if we give it a value like zero? One simple fix is to just force the arguments to be within a reasonable range. Zero isn't a reasonable number of uh, values to print. This number 256 that we're using as our maximum array size is cropping up in a whole lot of places. So it might be good to define it in one place and then use that definition throughout our code just to make our lives a little easier. And still use explicit numbers in our loop code, but by using a defined constant through the rest of the code, we've made it more portable and robust, which was one of our objectives. Then we can apply the same bounds checking in our other function. And we can see what happens if we change the maximum size down to something smaller. The code crashes. Double-clicking reset doesn't seem to fix the problem, so we'll have to look somewhere else. Our array has only two elements now, but we're writing 256 values to it. So we're overwriting a bunch of memory that we really shouldn't be overwriting, and that's what's causing the crash. So we can fix that by commenting out the conversion code for now to see if that uh, solves the problem. Our calls to the other functions don't get into that problem because those functions have checking to force the value of n into the range of the maximum array size. So that's more robust. We can follow the same process to make a conversion function now that's also more robust so we won't have that error and we can get back to getting values in millivolts. We call the new function and we get the results that we're expecting. So I think we're getting better at this process. We can get rid of the commented code, so it's easier to see exactly what's going on as we go through our loop function. Get an array of data, convert it to millivolts, show the results, then wait a second, then repeat the process. To make it even more general, let's tell our get function where the data should come from. So we'll pass it the argument A4 for the port that uh, it ought to get the data from. Change the function so it's ready to receive that variable input port uh, as an argument and use it to decide where to get the data from. 
that worked when we tested it. So let's add some code to force that AX argument into the range somewhere between port A1 and A5 so that we don't uh, go trying to get data from something where we're not sure what we're doing. Back to full size, and we should be able to move the declaration of that array into the loop function, making it a local array within the loop function. We want to have as few global variables as possible to avoid problems with conflicts. That worked great, so now I'm going to add a whole lot of comments so I can understand what I did here when I come back to this code in a few months, because I might need to use it again, either to create some new code or to help me understand on a test. I'm not surprised that it still works with the comments, but it's good to check. Scrolling up and down to see the different functions can be difficult, and you can lose your place. I find it a lot easier to create some new tabs and move the functions into a tab that's related to what they do, so that all the functions that, for instance, get data are in a tab called get. All of the functions that do conversions are in a tab called conv, and so on. Just make sure as you're copying that each function only appears in one place. Otherwise, you'll get a compile error for things being declared twice, which is obviously uh, easy to fix. Just delete one of them. So now it's easy to see all the elements of your code in separate tabs without so much scrolling up and down. The IDE will automatically put all of those tabs together when it compiles and uploads the code to the uh, microcontroller. Now we've got a sketch that is easy to read and has some generalized functions that will let us focus on the data we're collecting rather than on the coding process so much. Looking at the data collected on the serial plotter, we can see that the first value collected in each loop is always about 10 or 15 millivolts larger than the rest of the values collected. But that's a measurement question for another day. I hope this process-oriented example about how to build Arduino code has helped you find your way to building effective, reusable code for your own applications.